Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the Collector's Bundle and the Collector's Booster Box. And right now is literally probably one of the worst times for Wizard of Coast to sell something that is around 200 I'm sure that if uh, times were better, this would be like $250, maybe even more, maybe a little less. But yeah, right now, Magic is a luxury item. And luxury items are not really necessary. Now, on top of that, you do have to also consider, even though Magic is a luxury item, this collector's booster is a luxury item of a luxury item. It's twice the price of a regular booster box and it has even less utility in terms of drafting right because there's only 12 packs so if you just wanted to draft for fun you would much rather have a regular booster box the problem with the regular booster box of course is that there's nothing of value because of the collector's box so it goes like hand in hand I think the collector's box is really destroying the value of any regular booster boxes because, again, you have all these foils, you have all these um, cards. At the end of the day, there is not very much uh, in terms of... So a collector's booster box doesn't make any sense during a pandemic. A regular booster box makes a little bit more sense because you can draft it, you can play it with your friends and family. A standard set is not worth very much right now. You you cannot go to FNM, you cannot go to Saturday, whatever events. There's no events, there's no magic fest. I think it will be a long time. I mean Paper magic is you going to meet complete strangers you don't know and playing face-to-face -face with magic. You don't know if they have diseases. You don't know what their hygiene is like. And you can't really control that either. Um, you don't know if they're mentally stable. So I think the days of paper magic are... There, there's not many, it's not there's not going to be that many days of paper magic anymore and yes that is sad but that is kind of the reality we live in when you talk about Ikoria this is going to be one of the worst sets in history if not the worst I mean it could be I'm thinking about fallen empires that was really bad homelands that was really bad this is going to be on par to that. And it's not because the cards. So the problem from those two sets are the cards suck. But because there's going to be a shift in how people play Magic. And it won't be Paper Magic. And now you're releasing a premium product. Which is destroying your normal product. There, there is something kind of interesting right there's an interesting dynamic going on i don't think ikoria that will be that much i just don't see the demand for ikoria um the pre-release is online the magic fest is online everything is online so why would you need ikoria cards and again magic is a luxury item but even beyond just a luxury item this collector's box is just i mean it's <laughs> it's crazy, right? It's something that you can't even fathom. Like, even in when the economy was really, really good, how many people were going to pay $200 a box? How many people were going to pay $300 a box? And you have people saying, oh... You have people saying, oh, look at this. Um, invest in it. You should buy 500 of these Pharaoh's Collector's Boxes. I bought 1,000 of them, and now I'm going to sell it to my patrons, and they're going to hold for long-term invest. Standard Paper Magic, I've always said this, and I continue to say it. I mean, I'm not buying Standard, you guys. I'm buying Reserve List. And the Reserve List, I feel... 
it's not even just reserve lists. It's reserve lists that people play in EDH. That's the only paper magic I think can survive this. And even when I say survive, I, I mean it might tank 50%, maybe more. But I can tell you for sure, standard is not going to, paper standard, it's going to be a long time. Even assuming, okay, the pandemic has subsided, it's going to be a long time before people want to go to a local game store and play face to face. Once people stop, it, it's, you know, you, you've seen this, you know, anyone who's been to a local game store knows this. When you go every week, you go every week. And there's a bunch of regulars who you always see there. But once the regular stops and they miss a week or two weeks or three weeks, you know some life event has changed their schedule or you know they're not coming back. You know, you could go for years on end like I did and then one day, one week you don't go, next week you don't go, the next week you don't go. If you, In here, you're talking about magic players and it's kind of habit, right? If you break the habit... I think you're done. You're done, Joe. It's going to be really weird. Um, and I don't particularly know if it ever will get better for Magic the Gathering stores. And I think that overall, Paper Magic will go down, but especially, especially, especially standard. You're buying Ikoria to play standard. I mean, that's it, right? But what if you cannot play standard? What if you there's no way for you to play standard? Then what's the point of buying Ikoria cards? Because it will lose a ton of value. It's going to lose a ton, a ton of value. I don't see Magic the Gathering itself recovering from this. I think it's just... Uh, I mean... For sure, I can advise you not to buy Ikoria if you cannot afford it. And do not if you do need to buy Ikoria, do not buy the collector's case because I don't see any value in it. I know people have been saying, oh, look at Pharaoh's, uh, look at the price. Oh, it's over 200. No, it's not over. It's declining. How could it possibly be going gaining in value when no one needs any of the cards in it to play? Because the majority of the cards... Yes, you in every set you have maybe 5% of cards that are EDH playable and maybe like 2 to 4% of the cards are playable in other formats. But the large majority of the cards can only really be played The large majority of the cards can only really be played in standard so the time period of Ikoria having the maximal value is when people are making new decks they're testing the new decks and they're playing with each other in person i don't see that happening for Ikoria so yeah um this is pharos beyond death uh the supposed 200 plus I remember Rudy said that he would buy, I guess, like, he would buy, like, a 1,000 of these at 200 if he could find a price. Well, I mean, they've always been at 200 They've just never gone up. They're declining as we speak. Remember, they pay, um, like, at 172 the dude is actually probably making, let's say, 15% off that with shipping because he's covering shipping. Yeah, he's not making that much money from this box. Maybe he's selling, maybe he's making 145 a box. So if you met this guy in person, I'm sure he would be happy to sell a box for you to you for 145. Maybe 150 at most. So things are getting really bad right now and you definitely should cut back on luxury items. You got to create your uh, Excel spreadsheet and then cut back on luxury items because honestly you don't need it. Do you really need magic cards? Probably not. 
Do you really need collector's editions of Magic cards? No one needs those. There is not... If you're trying to invest because someone told you, oh, well, there'll be low... There, there's a reason there's going to be low amounts of this card <laughs> set. You know, it's not just random. And there's so much better things you can invest in. Stocks, bonds, even dual lands, I think, as a long-term hedge is okay. Um, like I said, MTG Arena will replace Standard, and then Pioneer will eventually be on it, I hope. And then people are so used to having their Magic Fest online. And uh, the whole point of a Magic Fest, like physically being there, makes no sense today if MTG is a eSport. Because you should be able to register and play from anywhere, right? And wouldn't that inc have more people? Like if you could just log on online and then register in a tournament, wouldn't you have like a bunch more people? There would be no cheating, there would be no stealing, there would be no trading, and you don't have the overhead you have, which is the conferences. Unless Channel Fireball has like a really amazing lawyer, I'm sure that they put deposits down for each of those sites, and those deposits are unlikely to be refundable. But again, it depends on their contract, and I'm sure they're not going to publicly show what their con. And my, every contract may be different depending on the conference. But that's such a heavy risk when anybody can just have a Magic Online. I mean, they just asked, where's the coast? And they said, yes. Why would you ever have a Magic Fest that's not online from here on out? The co overhead is almost nothing. Right? And then even a prize support, you could give gems. So it could be digitally paid out. So anyway, hi guys.